Well, today is handle glue up day. I've got eight knives to get handles installed on and I thought I'd kind of slow down the process a little bit and show you guys how I install some handles on a knife to where when I send that knife out the door, I'm 100% confident that I will not have any failures. Um, I picked up a couple little tips and tricks throughout the last few years that help with this and I think you guys are going to enjoy this video. So for today's video, we're going to be working on one of my full-size mucks. This one's in Magna Cut stainless. Um, it's kind of dirty right now, but you can see it's finished ground and ready for handles. And the handles are some of this really cool neon orange micarta. Really, really nice stuff. And then I did some black G10 liners. As you can see, I've got the front portion all finished, sanded, polished. And I've also got my pins uh, sized correctly and fit up. Um, so if you guys want to see kind of the whole process for installing a handle on a knife, I will post that video in the link below. I did that a couple years ago where I kind of in detail went over every step start to finish. This video is more getting it prepped once you're at this stage uh, in a kind of a fine detail to make sure that you do not have any failures. I think it's very, very important. And I have picked up a couple little things along the way that have helped a lot with this. So Let's get into today's video. All right, so the first step for this is I like to take a marker and mark on my blade where that scale comes to. So then I can start the scuffing process on the knife itself. So as you can see, I kind of make a little line here. And a lot of times that scale, when you set that on there, will leave a little mark where it comes to and I just kind of trace it out on the knife like that and again this gives me a spot to where I know where I can scuff this blank to uh, for uh, so I don't go past that and end up hitting this spot and then you see it past the scale it's never good so come over to the grinder let's get this scuffed up okay so I put a 36 grip belt on here it's kind of a worn out one but it still cuts good and be very careful with this step because we're just roughly scuffing this part of the knife up to our stopping point. Don't go, you know, don't get super close and end up causing problems. Um, we're going to cut it right up to our drawn in line there. Just like that. We're not removing any material. We're just scuffing this up really good. So you can, I mean, you can feel it with your fingernail, but it doesn't end up leaving any gaps or anything when you go to install your handle. Then once you get that done, I take just some 40 grit paper and I'll very, very carefully, see if you guys can kind of see this, scuff right up to my drawn in lines. And you just want to make sure that you've got every portion of that blade where your handle is going to be glued up to scuffed really, really thoroughly. You don't want any shiny metal. And I find that, you know, the coarser, the better with this portion of it. Um, using a 40 grit or a 36 grit doesn't cause any problems. And I don't like when there's any gaps between, obviously, the handle and the blade itself, people, which happens sometimes, we talked about in the past with copper, um, but with this, go really coarse and scratch it up really, really good. And marking that line on the blade for me just gives you a really positive spot where you need to sand to, to make sure you don't go too far. So, should look about like that. All right, so for the next step, we've got our scales over here. I'm gonna pop these pins out. This one's a little tight. There's a really fine line between having your pins perfect, and I'd rather be a little bit tight than a little loose. Um, so we're over at the drill press, 
and I've got a little small eighth inch bit in here. And what I like to do is put a bunch of small holes on the side that's being installed um, on the knife. Now you have to be really careful doing this that you don't go in too far. Luckily, this set of scales uh, is super beefy, but um, I like to go, if you're doing a liner, just past the liner into the actual material. And I find that it gives the knife all that epoxy kind of spots to go into, which at the end of the day, in my head, just gives it a little more strength and durability. Um, I'm curious what you guys think about that, but I just kick this on and put kind of as many holes, especially along the front um, and all through here as I can do. So let's get it done. So once you've got your scales to where they look kind of like that, you see I've got all my little holes drilled. I've got, I don't know what you want to call that, reamed, whatever you want to call that, bored out a little bit around the pinholes. I like to do that to just get a lot, a little more epoxy hold around there. Again, this is all kind of stuff that I'm just in my head. I feel like it works good. Um, the next step is you need to make sure that your scales are perfectly flat. Um, I think that that's a key to installing knife handles that people look past a little bit. Now with these man-made materials, it's a little easier, um, but I'm sure you guys have seen, I do a lot of burl woods, a lot of antlers, a lot of mammoth tusk and stuff like that, um, where it likes to warp and move a little bit. Um, I think it's more important with that as far as getting it flat, it's a little more challenging. Now with these scales, Right now, they're pretty close to flat. I haven't had to do anything really to uh, fix any warps or anything like that. So we're gonna do a couple light passes there. And just to show you guys kind of how that fitment is. Um, let's see, yeah, no gaps between there. And I have to just sand it down a little bit. You see like just a tiny bit of a gap right there and up and through. Now that was caused for me drilling all these holes and uh, materials just keeping them from being flat. But you see there's no warping. Everything's really good and straight. So it's cold in the shop right now. Every time I do videos, I have to turn the heater on for a little bit. So it's cold in here. Um, what I like to do is take like an 80 grit piece of sandpaper on the granite surface plate. And I find that if you do passes like this kind of a lot of pressure hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing um, that's prepping that surface and it's also making it super flat 80 grit seems to be a good number for me um, if you go much lower what happens is you start to see like the little, I don't know if you want to call them burrs or something like that. When you actually glue these up, um, you'll see how it's scuffed a little too aggressively right there up against that flat part of the knife. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. Um, but there you can see just a couple passes, tighten that right up. And that front part's good to go. And that's yeah, pretty good. I'm going to do a couple more passes, but you want to make sure that you've got it all scuffed nice and evenly, no shiny stuff showing on what you're gluing up. I also found that kind of keeping it where you do passes like this, um, instead of going back and forth, what I've noticed is you would end up rounding off that very uh, tip right there where it meets the blade and then you get a little gap. So for some reason for me, if I take it like this and just go one direction like that, it keeps it all just perfectly flat and I don't end up with any problems.
All right, so we are ready for glue up. Now, I think the most important part of this is making sure that you've got these materials cleaned properly um, before you epoxy the scales on. Now, what I like to do is clean everything a couple times. And I use lacquer thinner for it with just a clean, I just use an old t-shirt as a rag. I find it has the least amount of like dust in it or loose fibers that come off like a rag will. And it just seems like if you clean it once, you get the bulk off and then you go over it one more time and it really just dials it in. I, before I made knives, I think I've talked to you guys about this in the past, but I used to buy and restore like little Honda uh, Trail 70s and Z50s um, kind of as a little side hobby. And I would do all the paint work on them in my old shop. And I, you really find a whole new appreciation for prep when you do paint work. You see how you can clean apart, get it all prepped for paint, and you spray it and you see little fish eyes or little things where there's little oil residue or wax residue that didn't get off and you realize that cleaning something once or twice isn't enough. Like, I mean, you'd end up prepping a fuel tank three or four different times, cleaning it, wax remover, all the stuff before it's ready. And I kind of took that into this same principle to where you know, you can't really have it too clean. So I always, always wipe everything down a couple times prior to applying the epoxy and it seems to really work out pretty good for me. So scales are wiped down. I take my pins and I even clean off all the dust from my pins and, um, Make sure everything is good to go. You can use gloves for this too. Uh, I normally don't just because they end up getting in the way more than anything, but make sure you don't have grease and stuff all over your hands and keep everything as clean as possible. So we're gonna be using uh, G-Flex from West Systems. I'm sure you guys have seen in the past, I've tried out a ton of different epoxies. Like I've really put to the test all the different ones. I've tried this, I've tried the, I believe it's called Forge Bond from Starbond, which is another good product. And the Blade Pro from, I believe that's made by System 3. Um, those are good as well. But this G-Flex just seems to be kind of the best. Um, it's held up really good. I've had no failures with it and I highly recommend it. Let me know what you guys use down in the comments for this or something else you'd like to see me try out and compare to the G-Flex, but I haven't found anything that uh, compares to it. So that's what I'm gonna use. Um, so you get it mixed up here and I like to uh, make sure there's no fuzzies left over from your rag before you apply your epoxy. And hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here good enough. I like to just do a nice even coat. I don't put on a crazy amount, but I like to kind of fill all those little holes that I made and get all the edges covered with the epoxy really good. And I try to avoid getting it in that lanyard tube hole because it ends up getting inside your lanyard tube and cause a problem. So get that like that. And then I take a little bit of epoxy on the pin and kind of put it in the pin hole and give it a little spin. Now these pins are going to be a little short for me because this material is so thick, but that's okay. So let's see that. Now take the knife without really touching it. Press it on there. You can kind of see it coming up through those holes in the blank itself. And same thing on this side of the scale. So then I like to take a little bit of epoxy and put it on the pin coming through. 
just to make sure it's coated good and get your other scale fit. Take your lanyard tube, roll it in a little epoxy, make sure that's coated good, and get it into place. Once you've got it glued up, I take one of these spring clamps and I get it to where it's tight on the bottom and then it also makes it to where the knife will stand up straight. And then I take my little C clamps and I use two on each knife and clamp it down. Now I don't use like a ton of pressure when I do this, hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, but I also do quite a bit of pressure. I hear there's lots of different ways to do this where you don't want to, people say, oh, I don't want to squeeze out all the epoxy. But I find that doing this, uh, I haven't had any problems with this and it makes a really tight finish. So that's looking good. Everything is no gaps. Everything's good and clean. And now we just have to clean that epoxy uh, squeeze out and make sure there's no residue once it hardens. So what I like to do is take a couple Q-tips. You guys, it's hard to see this, but... And these are just dry Q-tips and I wipe away that excess epoxy with the dry Q-tip. And then I take a little bit of lacquer thinner. Now the key with this is you don't want <laughs> to use so much that it leaks lacquer down in between the scale and the knife. So I use a little bit of lacquer, just enough to clean it off, but not, en not enough to where it actually drips off the Q-tip and you can clean up that area really good. So once this epoxy cures, you uh, have a really crisp transition there. All right, let me see if I can get you guys a little close up of that spot so you can see. How it's nice and clean. Let me hit it from the other side. Really crispy and no goose out. Now, if you're doing this on a high carbon steel knife, after you clean that, I take a little bit of oil. I just use REM oil for a lot of stuff. Um, it seems to work really well. Take that, those spots that you clean. Now, this is Magna Cut. I'm just showing you for... And I wipe down those spots with a little bit of oil because depending on where you live, depending on the humidity, depending on everything, you'd hate to come back the next day and have rust starting in those spots and that you just cleaned on your high-carbon steel knife. So I lightly oil those spots and... You are good to go. Now, if you follow all those steps, I think you'll have a huge success rate. Um, again, if you guys see something that I did that maybe you do differently, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Um, maybe if you think this is overkill, let me know on that as well. Um, like always, I appreciate you guys watching. I'll put links below to all of the materials I used in today's videos. And also I'll put a link to the Patreon channel. Now I'm doing a group chat in there to where if you join up on the Patreon, I think it's only $5. There's a private group chat that you can talk with me and the other Patreons about what you got going on. If you have any specific questions, um, it's just a little perk of being on the Patreon. So make sure you sign up for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And like always, guys, thanks for watching.